Welcome back. He's been called the king of improv, whose stand-up comedy draws huge crowds in his native Quebec. He performs in French and English with a little Hindi and Punjabi for good measure. But Sugar Sammy's star has gone supernova in France, in a country that takes its culture very seriously, a Canadian is poking fun at what makes the French French. And as Genevieve Beauchemin tells us, he's getting away with it. Paris, city of lights, the world's theater for arts and culture for centuries now, where stars of the stage burn bright. But where finding a place among those stars is tough, nearly impossible for un étranger, an outsider. Monsieur Sugar Sammy! Quebec comedian Sugar Sammy has rock star status here. The leather jacket to match, swagger, and attitude. He stands out with provocative one-liners on race, French stereotypes, pushing the boundaries of what's acceptable. Content d'être ici en France, j'adore la France de mon pays arabe préféré. Here, telling his French audience, France is his favorite Arab country. In this lineup is evidence the edgy comedian is breaking through. Oh, you're excited. I'm excited. Sugar Sammy has sold out the legendary L'Alhambra Theater here in Paris for months. He's also become a TV star. C'est le new king of comedy, Mr. Sugar. He studies, zeroes in on touchy issues, picks out quirks of cultures, and roasts spectators with uncomfortable precision in both English and French. On t'a donné un nom blanc aussi. À partir de maintenant, Mamadou, tu t'appelles Thierry. His stage is Europe these days, but home is right here in Montreal, where Sugar Sammy is a household name. People, I, I feel like they treat me like family here, which always feels good, you know? Coming off a run of sold-out shows right across the province. And a grand finale that attracted over 100,000 spectators. And he's also hosted multiple shows at the world-renowned Just For Laughs Festival. I tried that with my Arab friend. I was like, hey, man, your mama's teeth are so yellow. When she smiles, she slows down traffic. He's like, you have 10 seconds to run. <laughs> because I will kill you. So a walk in a downtown mall turns into a frenzy of fans looking for a selfie with the star. Because it's here, in Quebec, where it all started for the comedian. Thank you. No problem, Thank you. no problem. Did you ever think you'd reach this level of celebrity here in your home province? I don't think I ever planned for it, you know? Uh, and it wasn't something that was on my radar. I'd be working and touring the world for, for years. It became bigger than I thought, which is a good surprise. Sugar Sammy was born Samir Kular to parents who immigrated from India, outsiders who worked tirelessly to build a life in Montreal. And he grew up in a neighborhood that is uniquely diverse. Well, I grew up in a neighborhood called Côte des Neiges, which is uh, the most multicultural neighborhood in Quebec. Uh, I went to the most multicultural elementary and high school in the province. So I grew up with people who came from so many different cultures who spoke three languages naturally. You know, they had their mother tongue. Uh, they'd speak English because they'd watch American TV. And then uh, they spoke French because they were fr forced to go to French school. It was so multi-ethnic that you could have, you could learn about the whole world right there in your classroom, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, I think the secret of, of my success, the reason why it's worked so well everywhere else is because I came from this neighborhood. For me, it was such an easy way to, to, to connect with different audiences in different countries because it was a window onto the rest of the world. So whenever I go to Lebanon and I'll have an inside joke with the Lebanese, they'll be like, how do you know us so well? I'm like, I grew up with, you know, a uh, Lebanese friend. You know, when I, when I, whenever I, I've gone to, uh, to, to, to Iran or, or any other place, you know? I mean, I've never been to Iran. Let's start that over. <laughs> that's start that's that not over. true. That's, that's, <laughs> Quebec's Bill 101, the province's polarizing law protecting the language, forced Sammy into French school. It requires children of immigrants to be educated in the province's official language. What did that bring you in terms of your uprising? What do you think of that? I don't think I would have learned French 
in the same way that I, I did in my developmental years. I mean, it was, it, was, it was good to have it early on. That's a difficult language to learn later on as an adult, you know? It was a school where we were all ethnicities, but Quebecois, like, learning Quebecois teachers. So it was a different education. It was, even catechese was different. <laughs> you know, catechism class, right? The apostles were all named in French, right? Peter was Pierre, <laughs> right? John was Jean. Matthew was Mathieu. Judas was l'asti d'importé crosseur qui a trahi notre Dieu. Bill 101 at home was uh, Hindi and Punjabi, Hindi right? And Punjabi. <laughs> that was the, That was it. You were not allowed to speak other languages, right? Exactly. My parents actually had the same uh, po uh, point of view and the same regimen as the government did. They're like, we're, <laughs> we weren't allowed to. We weren't allowed to speak any other language at home with my parents than uh, Punjabi. We had to speak Punjabi, and I think for them it was. Uh, for the same reason. They didn't want us to lose the language or the culture. What's your name, brother? Jean-Sébastien. Jean-Sébastien. You took two names. <laughs> like, I'm gonna take two. Jean-Sébastien, what do you do, brother? Moi, je vais à l'école. Toi, tu vas à l'école. I love how I asked you in English, but you're like, f*** it, I'm gonna answer in French. Most of his humor is cultural, including poking fun at separatists. But some critics have called him a francophobe, a dangerous federalist for his trademark jokes mocking those who want to pull out of Canada. Ben oui, ça va? Ça va, la gang? You guys happy with where you're sitting, or do you want to separate from the rest of it? He's even faced threats, but says the laughter is louder than the intimidation. You know, you throw shade on people, but it's from a place of affection, does that? Yeah, I think when you do that, you really have to know a culture well. You have to be very precise. It can't be a caricature, because that's when it becomes insulting. And I think that's the secret. You actually have to be interested in other people. On va vous accommoder. His ability to poke fun and joke about all of our differences has propelled him to the top of the comedy charts in both France and Quebec. And Leonardo, what do you do? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Relax, man, I'm not immigration. You know, this is where I grew up, this is where it all started. The basis of everything I do today, I mean, thanks, uh, thanks to this area, thanks to this neighborhood. This is where you're causing trouble to go to, right? This is where I caused a lot of trouble and then I expanded my troublemaking uh, worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> but unexpectedly, you did hang out a lot in this library. I, guess. I did hang out in this library, but uh, you'll see it, it, it's not what you think. <laughs> <laughs> In the basement, he discovered instruction manuals of sorts on how to get laughs. So I'd come down here and I'd, uh, I'd pick up the, uh, the comic books. Look at this. It's a treasure trove for any kid. I used to just pick up a stack of comic books, bring them home for weeks on end, and then uh, bring them back. And that was pretty much my hangout at the library. So. so it wasn't exactly studying, but it was pretty good. Learning. Yeah, it was learning. It wasn't studying what my mom wished I was studying, but. I was studying, uh, I think it, uh, it definitely helped shape who I am today, so mm -hmm. not so bad. Those books taught Sam at an early age to observe, to find differences and zero in to get a laugh. A skill he practiced through grade school to McGill University. He majored in cultural studies. Would you describe him like he was the class clown, right? And when your group of friends, he was the... I, I, you can't get through a conversation with him not interrupting it with some, with some joke or, uh, or something. Absolutely. Longtime friend Alan Saram says that's when the comedian developed his business savvy, establishing a side business as a promoter between university classes. He threw parties among the hottest tickets in town then, and Samir Kular became Sugar Sammy. He was Samir to you before he was Sugar Sammy, yeah? yeah he, was, he was Sam, he was Samir, and then very quickly became, uh, became Sugar Sammy. There's just, again, uh, about his entrepreneurial spirit. So Sugar Sammy is derived from, from, from Sugar Daddy, uh, which was one of his marketing stunts to the party, when he was party promoting. Uh, he would basically ensure that uh, all of the, 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 the ladies were, were invited to the parties for, for free. And they can get in. It was all about that. It was about generating um, a, a vibe. And he knew that. And so that's where the nickname Sugar Sammy uh, came from and it, it just stuck. Has anyone ever come up to you and said they claim ownership of, I'm the one who started that? They haven't done that yet. I don't think anybody wants to. I don't think <laughs> I want that story floating around. So, so um, 
so can we cut this? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you haven't thought about changing this though in all these years. Yeah, yeah. Gotta, once you're once you've ridden on it for a while, it's hard to change that. <laughs> well, here's the thing: is when I went into comedy full time, all these people who you who were uh, coming to my parties started coming to my shows, you know, because they knew me so well. And so I, I decided I'd keep the name, and uh, now I, I can't get rid of it. <laughs> it's too late. It's, it's too like, late now. you know. It's too late now. But now I look back, I'm like, oh, it's not bad. You know, a lot of good boxers historically have had that, those names. You know, Sugar Ray Leonard, Sugar Ray Robinson. So uh, not in bad company. The parties were fun, but it was clear his passion was humor. He started with a stand-up routine in Montreal's small comedy clubs, making the Anglo University crowd laugh. So you're from Toronto, and I just got here on the weekend to make love to the women. That crowd grew and grew. But there was a market Sugar Sammy wanted to explore, winning over the Quebecois in their own language. Just for laughs, director Paul Ronca ran a small comedy club. He'd hired Sammy to perform in English and knew the jokester had potential. I think he's more fearless than most, to be honest with you. But he feared his act, en français, would be lost in translation and flop. When Sammy approached me and he's like, I want to do it in French, and I looked at him, I said, wait a minute, you're an Anglo-Indian guy from NDG. There's no way you're going to pull this off. I've seen so many people who speak French have a hard time doing this. There's no way you're going to pull it off. My career was everywhere else. I was touring English Canada, I was touring the States, I was touring all over the world. And I thought to myself, let me try this. So I had less to lose than all the other um, Quebecois personalities, you know? And it's really proud. It's here, it's here. Okay, madame, relax, it's not a chasse aux Haitiens. Taking a risk to get the laughs. As soon as I announced a bilingual show, some people started saying, no, no, ça va faire hits the right note. And he just stepped on stage and he killed right away. When W5 continues. Breaking into show business isn't easy. How are you, Montreal? Especially in the cutthroat world of stand-up comedy. Mais est-ce qu'on va vraiment classifier ça comme une guerre? Ça a duré un avant-midi. But Sugar Sammy took the province of Quebec by storm, first delivering his biting jokes in English, then French. I got stopped by the cops the other day, and they were like, Hey, mon homme, pourquoi tu faisais la vitesse dans le tunnel? I was like, Honnêtement, monsieur, j'étais pas trop sûr j'allais sortir l'autre bar. Paul Ronca was a comedy club owner in Montreal in the early 2000s. He took a risk booking Sammy for his first show en français. I believe it was a seven or ten minute set, and he just stepped on stage and he killed right away. And I said, this guy's got talent more than anyone else I've personally seen up until that point. There's no way he's not going to make it. But the stand-up comic decided to go even further, venture onto ground no one had tested before. He took his humor bilingual, creating a show called You're Gonna Rire. You're Gonna Laugh. So happy you guys are here for the bilingual show, because you know what? Not everybody loves this show. As soon as I announced a bilingual show, some people lost their minds and started saying, Lo, lo, so va fire. And it was here, at this theater, where Quebec comedy history was made. It became the first ever successful bilingual comedy show, offending spectators in both languages. A run with 150 sold-out performances in front of 1,400 people a night. A success every critic said was impossible. This building holds a special place in Sam's heart. Tell me about what, what's it like being on the stage for you when you look at this? What do you think of? This is home. This is my second home. I feel so good up here. This is, uh, this is probably uh, where, you know, a good four and a half years of my life was spent performing for, uh, for my hometown audience. I'll always remember this place because uh, it took my career to new heights and it, t and it, uh, and it made me connect with uh, Montreal in a way that I hadn't, I hadn't before, you know? comedy was. The bilingual show You're Gonna Rire finished its run generating an astounding $17.4 million in ticket sales, propelling Sam to stardom in Quebec. 
But for the business-savvy comedian, Quebec was not enough. I, I was happy about that, and I thought to myself, you know, I, if I follow my gut, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to be able to, uh, to make the right moves. And for France, I thought it was a right move for me artistically, uh, as a writer, and uh, I thought it was a logical uh, next step business-wise after, after Quebec. But that move to France meant starting from scratch. He was a no-name comedian from abroad trying to establish himself in a country already packed with artists. His climb to fame started here, in the central Paris second arrondissement, a neighborhood he quickly adopted. So this is the uh, the neighborhood, your neighborhood, your Côte des Neiges of Paris. This is my Côte des Neiges. I think it's a little more chic than Côte des Neiges. <laughs> is it? Um, but, uh, but yeah, nevertheless, this is my hood here in, in Paris. You know, you're on the street, but you got to go from shop to shop. And, you know, you have that personal uh, interaction and in touch with uh, your uh, local neighborhood shopkeepers. And I think that becomes fun. It gives you sort of a, a life, you know, a neighborhood life. Yeah. You seem to have gotten to know quite a few people here, just one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. getting to know them and developing those relationships. Yeah, I like that. You know, I think it, 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 makes, it, it makes it so it's not just about work. You know, you, and I think for us, you, when it's not about work, that's when the best work gets created. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sammy dug up new punchlines by getting to know his neighbors here, picking out their quirks. Où sont les patates douces, s'il vous plaît? Elle me dit, uh, franchement, uh, je sais pas. <laughs> now his brand of comedy sells out show after show in Paris. For over an hour and a half, Sugar Sammy commands the crowd, taking not so gentle jabs at the French. Some improv moments leave spectators both laughing. And squirming. Est-ce qu'il y a des Américains ici ce soir? Americans? Par applaudissement. Regarde. Oh, oh, oh. Pourquoi t'as peur? Relax, ok? C'est juste des Français, ils vont rien faire. He really came here, low key, can I say that? Observing, you know, the Parisian people and France. He, he really studied us like an anthropologist. Rosanna Di Vincenzo is the humor writer for Telerama, a local Parisian arts guide. How hard is it for a Quebecer to break, break through on the scene in France, particularly in Paris? Ah, it's very difficult because Parisian audience is very um, difficult. And also there are lots of shows. Uh, I think it's 500 uh, stand-up comedy, uh, stand-up comedians or one-man shows uh, each evening in Paris. So to stand out, it's really, really difficult. The fact that he's an outsider making fun, does it, does it, that's an asset? Yeah, yeah, because uh, a Kenyan, Canadian guy coming here and making fr fun of French people. I mean, it's this vision, this particular vision that is funny. Uh, having his opinion on this is, uh, is different than having a French person uh, making the same jokes about the same issues. It's different and it's funnier. People here notoriously snobby about their culture. Right. What did you think you could make it here? Well, I, I felt like that was the funny thing, is watching it from an outsider's point of view and identifying that and actually bringing it up right away in the show. You know, just bringing up their faults right away, making it an honest and severe critique of France. I thought that, you know, that formula has worked for me so far. And I think here it would, I, I thought it would work, but not at, to this extent. You know, like um, in Quebec, we have a sense of humor in Canada and the States, but here they're like a little bit masochistic, where like they want it to hurt when you're, when you're on stage, you know, they love it. Paris, I mean, you know, we're sitting in a cafe here. The, the usual thing people do is they sit in a cafe and they watch people walk by and they judge them. And this is not uncommon. This is, this is like common occurrence. I mean, it's happening behind us right now. There, you, know? you there judging? Look, I'm judging people right now. Really? I've become what are you region. thinking? See, there's a man just walked by with a purse. Like, very common here. <laughs> I'll judge that. I'll write about that in the show. You know, men can wear purses in France. That's fine. You're gonna train me a little bit. Yeah. Come on, yeah. what the hell? Yeah. You gotta give them this look. Okay. You gotta have that. You gotta work on the look. It's what is the Parisian look? A, oh. You gotta raise an eyebrow, put a little bit of duck face, and then just look down and judge them. Just kind of like. <laughs> okay, gotta work on that one. <laughs> Sugar Sammy's passion for comedy now has Parisian crowds chuckling in theaters, but his stardom has reached even greater heights thanks to a new gig. Sammy recently became a celebrity judge on one of France's most popular shows, La France a un incroyable talent. Je sais pas où ça a commencé, mais je trouve que ça fonctionne pas. It's a show modeled after the hit American series, America's Got Talent. Deborah Huet and Bruno Fallot are the producers. To be on that show, 
Do you think that gives him a lot of visibility? What does that do for him? Oh, it's huge. Being a judge on Francisco Talent is huge. Um, it's like 3.5 or 4 million viewers uh, every week. Um, so yeah, for, for someone who is kind of starting his career in France, it's like a huge yeah. step. What is it about his humor that you found? So descriptive, so different, uh, very sharp. Uh, he talks about politics, uh, about religions. Um, about love. About love too, yeah, about sex. He does it his own way and it's always... Très juste, right on. Right on, it's yeah. always right on. Mm. It's precise. Sammy vows to continue pushing boundaries in France, be edgier, taunt Parisians, test the limits of how far stand-up comedy can go. I work so hard on the act, make sure that it's great, because I want my audience to trust me, that they're gonna come and watch an extraordinary show. It won't just be a guy winging it, you know? And I think that's very important to me, is to make sure that my audience feels like they can trust me, and they can trust me for the rest of my career. And W5 continues in a moment.